Hey guys, it's Erica here with Tiny Acorn. I know you guys are used to my fashion and my thrift with me videos and whatnot, but this one's gonna be a little different. If you prefer to stick to the fashion stuff, then you may wanna skip this video, but if you're like me and you love diving deep and you love having heart to hearts, then stay tuned and keep watching. channel I really want to focus on helping women feel confident in their own skin. I myself have been going on a journey of inner confidence over the past two years. So I wanted to share with you guys just some things that I've done that I have seen have made a difference in me and in my self-esteem and in my confidence levels. So I'm going to be sharing with you today seven tips on how you can take steps towards inner confidence. Before we dive into the seven tips that I have for you guys, I wanted to bring up a couple of points. The first point is that you are never going to get your confidence from how other people feel about you. If you are depending on other people's opinions of you to validate you and who you are, then you will live and die by man's praise. And that means you'll be on top of the world when they think you're awesome. But as soon as they don't, your self-esteem is going to be plummeting. And we don't want that. We want something that is more consistent. Okay, so another thing I want to bring up is that there's going to be people in the world who will not like you. And you have to be okay with this. You really cannot go through your whole life trying to please everyone. You need to know that it's okay to say no and it's okay to have boundaries. And some people will not like you for that. But it's important to building your self-esteem to be able to confidently say no, not have to make excuses or reasons why. There will be people in your life who will have a problem with that. If that's the case, then honestly, just let them move on. Okay, last thing to drill into your brain is to remember that you are lovable. You're not lovable for what you can do. You're lovable simply because you are a created being. Your essence is valuable and worthy just for who you are. So you are lovable no matter what you might believe or what someone may have told you. It doesn't matter. You are. Okay, so let's dive into the tips on how to move towards inner confidence. I'm going to do my best to sort of paraphrase uh, my own experience doing these different things so that you can hear a little bit of my story and a little bit of how these things have been helpful for me. Okay, number one is it's very hard to move towards having a sense of self-esteem if you're in a very toxic relationship or you have toxic people around you that are really obliterating your self-confidence. So the first step is to cut off any relationships that are not healthy for you, relationships that leave you feeling insecure, relationships that do not help you move on the path towards self-confidence and having a good self-esteem. So ask yourself, after I hang out with this person, how do I feel about myself? Am I left feeling encouraged and hopeful? Am I left feeling valued? Am I left feeling better about myself? Or am I left feeling less than? So for me, I definitely have had many relationships in my life, friendships and romantic relationships where I have felt less than while I was in the relationship. The friendships with women, I have often been around women who really talk a lot about themselves, you know, talking about how great they looked and how, you know, tan they were and how great their butt was and how this guy checked me out and that guy checked me out. And I feel like looking back, it was just their own way of dealing with their own insecurities. I never felt like they wanted to encourage me as a friend. Um, they never would say anything positive about me. And so I was just left feeling like, wow, they must be really great and I must be 
inferior because I'm not as tan as them or my butt doesn't look as good as theirs or that guy wasn't checking me out but he was checking them out so it definitely affected my self-esteem and I kind of just got to the point where I was like you know I don't feel good when I'm around this person so I had to cut off those relationships okay and so the same goes for social media many years ago I was on Instagram a lot and I would follow a lot of really beautiful women and I mean there's nothing wrong with that but I started to notice that it was affecting my self-esteem. My thought patterns when I was looking at their photos um, leaned more towards, wow, they're so great and I look nothing like them and so there's something wrong with me and if only I looked like that, you know, then I would feel confident, then I would feel sexy. I had to recognize like, I need to unfollow this person. It's not anything that they're doing, it's the fact that I can't handle this right now. And so there might be some accounts that you're following on social media. Just check yourself and just see, how do I feel when I'm following this account? Do I feel inspired, hopeful? Do I feel good about myself? Or am I comparing myself to this person in a negative way? And if you are, honestly, just unfollow them or silence them or whatever you need to do because you need to focus on yourself and you need to focus on building up your self-esteem and maybe in the future you'll be able to follow that person you'll be able to look at their photos and it won't affect you in the same way but just do what is best for yourself right now okay so the number two tip that i have for you guys and one of the things that has honestly been such a game changer for me is choosing to partner with your body when I started to look at my body as if it was like a separate entity or a separate person, I began to realize that like, I would never talk to my friend the way that I talk to my body or myself. I would never be that critical. I would never tell my friend like, you have like ugly feet, your butt is saggy and like a pancake and whatever. I would never say that stuff. And I'm sure that there's things that you are saying to yourself right now and that you're saying to your body that you would never say to a friend. And so why are you doing it to yourself? I was kind of uh, at a point in my life where I was forced to partner with my body, where my body was shutting down because of anxiety and stress. I was you know, having panic attacks and all of these physical symptoms. My body was trying to talk to me and trying to wake me up. And so I began to listen to it. I made a vow like, okay, body, I'm going to partner with you because you've been so good to me and you're just trying your best. You're doing as best you can. And so I'm going to be grateful for you. Basically, I made the choice to mentally switch on the gratitude for my body. And I actually walked across the city of San Francisco one day. It was like a turning point for me and I got to the end of the walk it took me like two and a half hours and it was seven miles i was just like thank you body thank you that i can walk across this city like thank you feet that i have despised my whole life thank you you're amazing i love you i am so grateful for you and i began to talk to my body that way and i'm telling you guys it will change your life partner with your body start extending gratitude to your body and radical acceptance. So the third tip that I have for you guys is to know your lies and break their power. Okay, this is so important, okay? We have all been receiving messages since we were born and there's been so many negative messages that we've received and these are straight up lies, okay? They're lies that are trying to keep you from your greatest self and your greatest potential on this planet. We need to be able to recognize these lies so that we can break their power over us. For me, I've had some really powerful moments when I chose to stop believing lies that I had believed my whole life. For example, Almost every relationship that I have been in since the fourth grade, whether it was a boyfriend or it was a boy that I liked and they said they liked me, every relationship was, there was another woman. There was another girl that they would flirt with right in front of me, that they would try to pursue, even though I was supposed to be the one that they were with. You know, I was cheated on several times. I had not realized that I had believed the lie that no matter what relationship I was in, there was always going to be another woman. 
that I would always be the inferior choice and that my partner would always rather be with someone else. So I believe that lie. I had to make the choice. And this is like the second part of knowing your life is breaking them. So once I recognized that lie, I had to decide, do I want to continue living my life in fear and always being on the lookout for like, where is the other woman going to be? Is that the other woman? Is it her? Is it her? Is it her? And just living in this anxious, paranoid, you know, feeling all the time. Or do I want to break that lie, break that curse and be like, no, I'm not going to accept that there's always going to be another woman and that I'm inferior, you know? Um, so I did that. So I think it's really powerful to, when you're breaking the lies over your life, to verbally out loud, um, acknowledge that you've been believing this lie and that today you're choosing from this point on to no longer partner with that lie over your life and to break its power over you. So for me, I like to verbalize and I like to visualize. At the time, I visualized a big tree and the tree was me and my life. There was a root sticking up and that root was actually the lie that there would always be another woman, that my partner would always want to be with somebody else. That root was massive because it had been growing in my life for so long. So I visualized myself just hacking it with an ax and just severing it from the tree and choosing at that moment that this is the moment that I let go of that and I no longer live under that lie. And it's been powerful, you guys. So I encourage you to recognize your lies, verbalize the lie that you've been believing and choose at that moment today I will no longer believe this lie, then try to visualize something that can help you just cement inside of your psyche and your heart this choice and this moment that you have decided to break that power of the lie, okay? All right, guys, this is so good. Oh, okay, step number four is one of the most powerful things that you can do throughout your whole entire life, okay? And that is to reparent yourself. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. I want you guys to do an exercise with me. Try to go somewhere where you're not distracted and close your eyes. I want you to visualize yourself as a little child standing in front of you, your hair, what you're wearing. Are you smiling? Are you sad? What do you want to say to this little girl? What does she need to hear from you? Does she need her feelings to be affirmed? Does she need to know she's lovable? Does she need to know it wasn't her fault? What would you say to this little girl that she needs to hear that she never heard? Show her the love that she deserved all along, but didn't receive. Hold her, comfort her. Remind her of who she is. Remind her that she is beautiful. She is valuable. She is a treasure. She deserves to be cherished. She deserves to be loved, not for what she does, but simply because of who she is. Okay, open your eyes. This is something that you can do. See that little girl that's still hurting inside of you. Validate her pain, love on her, remind her who she is because we all have that little child inside of us, okay, that is still hurting. When we, as adults, are able to love on this child, tell this child what it always needed to hear, it is honestly going to be one of the most powerful things that you could ever do. If you guys can start doing that, it's going to make a huge difference in your life, okay? So we've talked so far about a lot of things that you can do internally 
um, in your heart and in your psyche to sort of rewire your brain and get yourself to start thinking differently. But these next three tips that I'm going to share with you are more of action oriented tips. Okay. So tip number five, challenge yourself to do something that you are afraid of. Okay. Now this is such a good one because we are all afraid of stuff. You know, we're creatures of comfort. We love our comfort zone. But what happens is when you challenge yourself to do something new and you step out and you do it, you start to build confidence inside of yourself because you knew that this was hard for you and you did it anyways. And even if you failed, like you honestly didn't fail because you tried it. And that is something worth being proud of. So this is a great way to build self-confidence. So I'm talking about just little things too. So if you've always wanted to take a dance class, but you're too intimidated, take a dance class, go out in public without makeup on, go hike up a mountain, walk across your city in one day, cut all your hair off or dye it blonde, wear a thong at the beach people, <laughs> post your first YouTube video, turn your hobby into a business, put yourself out there. Whatever it is that you have maybe been afraid or shot too shy to do, I encourage you guys to take that step because once you step out and you do that, it's going to really boost your confidence and you're going to say, Hey, I was afraid of this and I actually did it. And I am so proud of myself. <laughs> okay. So tip number six, get comfortable in your own skin. All right, you guys, this is a very practical exercise that you can do when nobody's around get naked and dance, put on your favorite song and just move your body. Okay. Don't look in the mirror. Just move your body. Whatever feels good. Just start to get comfortable being in your own skin without any shame. Okay. And you're going to laugh. You're going to cry. Whatever emotions come up for you, just embrace it. Okay. The more comfortable you can get in your own skin, the more that's going to radiate out and your confidence in your self-esteem and you're just going to shine brightly and you're not going to care who sees it because you're so confident inside. What is my last tip? Tip number seven, make good choices for yourself from a place of love and radical acceptance. Yes, you want to get in shape. Yes, you want to, you know, feel great about the clothes you wear and you want to be beautiful on the outside and feel great about yourself. That's awesome. But <laughs> it's so important to start out from a place of radical acceptance. What I mean by radical acceptance is body, I accept you even if you never change. I love you even if you never change. That is radical acceptance. Because really, you know, you can do the external things, which is great, but if you have yet to rethink, rewire your brain, as soon as you get to that goal, you're still going to be unhappy. You're still not going to feel confident. You're still not going to have a great self-esteem. So we want to start from a place of love so that our healthy choices that we begin to make come from love and they're sustainable over the course of our lives. Okay. So I just want to do a quick recap really quick. This has been a long chatty video, but hopefully it was helpful for you guys. So tip number one, cut off any toxic relationships that are obliterating your self-confidence. This also includes social media when you need to cut yourself off from following certain people, at least for the time being, while you will choose to work on yourself and what's best for yourself. Tip number two, choose to partner with your body as your best friend. Tip number three, know your lies and break agreement with them. Tip number four, reparent the child within. Give yourself the love you never got. Tell yourself the encouraging words you never heard. Number five, challenge yourself to do something that you are afraid of. And in doing so, you will help build your confidence in a big way. Number six, get comfortable in your own skin. 
I encourage you to dance naked and just start to really be able to be at home within your own body. And number seven, make your choices from a place of love and radical acceptance and not fear and striving. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I know that was definitely a long chatty video, but I really hope that something that I said helped you in some way. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more chatty heart to heart videos like this. Leave me a comment, let me know. And remember that you are lovable just the way you are and you are beautiful just the way you are. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, bye. Hey guys, so I had to record a follow-up to this video for you guys because I want to be real with you. So basically, right after I filmed this video, the day after that, I experienced intense rejection in my life. My self-esteem just like plummeted. I felt like, wow, isn't that ironic that I had just taken this like really big step to record this video about my self-esteem journey. And I mean, I knew when I was making that video that obviously I'm not like there. It's a journey that we'll go through throughout our whole lives. But for me, recording that was a huge step. I don't know, I felt like it was the beginning of something new that I was doing on my channel. I'm really passionate about inner growth and inner healing and helping women feel confident. Yeah, so then after I, you know, recorded that video, next day I had this huge just blow to my confidence. But yeah, I think that's just kind of the reality of this journey is that it's two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. You know, maybe some of you have gone through that where you go through periods of time in your life where you feel confident and then something happens and you just hit rock bottom again. It's very interesting filming that video and then having to think back to all the things that I said and trying to apply them to that moment of feeling incredibly rejected and incredibly hurt. Anyways, I just wanted to share with you guys because I have my own insecurities as well. I deal with them on a reoccurring basis. You know, I'm not sharing this with you guys because I want you to leave comments that are nice or anything like that. To be perfectly honest, like even the good things that are said to me on social media by people in the good comments, they really don't land in my heart. <laughs> Hearing more of the comments that are like about how it's something that I've said or did changed your life, that's what really lands in my heart. It's just a, an, a journey for me of learning how to love and accept myself as I am. Yeah, and um, even if I do get rejected, you know, most of the times it's just like whatever's going on in that person's life and it doesn't have anything to do with you. There's definitely a certain amount of risk when you put yourself out there and you make yourself vulnerable and you do open the door for rejection and that can be really scary. But I would rather continue to be open and have an open heart instead of be hard and have a closed heart and close people out. That's just what happens with love, I guess. There's always the opportunity for pain and hurt. But anyways, <sighs> I hope you guys got something out of this video and hopefully me recording this, uh, you know, follow up. Maybe if that's happened to you where you've made some progress and then felt like you just went right back to how you were before, don't be discouraged because sometimes it just really is baby steps and you will make strides and you will move forward and you will see growth and then sometimes those things will just pop back up again and we have to deal with them again and it feels like, gosh, am I ever gonna change? I don't know, but you will and you won't be like that forever, don't worry. That's just a lie that can try to creep in there, but it's not true. Just having to remember that. This week on my Instagram, if you're not following me, go follow me on Tiny Acorn. 
I am going to be posting a lot of stuff about inner confidence and growing in our self-esteem and self-love and just sharing lots of stuff and hopefully we can have like a great week of supporting and loving each other as we are growing in our self-esteem journey. All right, I love you guys so much. Thanks for all your love and support. You're the best. All right, bye.